Welcome back to Armchair Generals. We thank you for being with us for part one of our introduction to our channel video. We do have part two upcoming in just a moment where we will continue our discussion about our introduction to 40K and the influence it's had on our lives since then. We do thank you for joining us and we hope you return for future videos. We're pulled into the game. Um, you know, we, we touched a little bit on some of our early experiences there. Um, like now, what what kept you playing the game um your early experiences with the game you know what pulled you in more beyond you know the introduction to the game what kept you as part of it i know for me the books actually helped a lot because i've always been a big reader really pulled me into the world and then uh we had a great teacher actually um at book and game emporium uh, a man named lucas really really did a very good job bringing us into the game teaching us not you know, trouncing us in game, but also not letting us win, making sure we learned as we, as we lost. Um, and uh, he, I, I mean, he was a very, very good introduction to the game. Um, but for me, my early experiences, what kept me with the game was definitely the books. Um, reading some of the old books, Space Wolf, Eye of Terror, uh, Xenos by Dan Abnett, um, first and only by Dan Abnett, those really pulled me in and, and immersed me into the world of 40K. Um, what, what really kept me into it was, you know, growing up in the 90s and 2000s, geek and gamer culture was not what it is today. That is not something you really told people you did at school. <laughs> you, you'd get your butt kicked, you'd get shoved in a locker. So... Uh, going to Book and Game Emporium was this whole group of like-minded individuals at the local game store who loved what you loved, who wanted to talk about all the geeky stuff you want to talk about, whether it be comics, games, movies. And it really was just this all, you know, inclusive area where you could just be you. And it was amazing. And then the everyone there happened to also play 40K and fantasy, so you could always get a game in. We'd usually play, what, sometimes five to ten games in that day, just depending on how, how many points and how big. Yeah. And then the same reason I like to go to tournaments, it's not always just for the play, which I love to play, but the camaraderie ship and then just BSing with friends that you haven't seen in a while. So every Saturday you'd go up, I mean, half the day was playing games, half the other day was maybe building models and just BSing with your buddies. Yeah, definitely. Give you some um, Unity. For, for me, um, it's kind of a combo of all three. Um, I kind of really miss actually the thing in October. Those were always fun. 72 hours of straight, just <laughs> Warhammer craziness. Um, Cabal Live by Red Bull and BS. And yeah. Then, and oh, don't forget Chicken. Those are some long apocalypse games. <laughs> yes, they were. Um, but 40K is just this kind of free mental space for me. Um, I, I am probably the king of daydreaming. Um, and I can, within the context of 40K, I can create my own factions from whatever army I want to. Um, I, you know, when it comes to RPGs, I really like the Dark Heresy and Rogue Trader settings. Um, and so I can come up with my own subsector, my own you know, government, imperial government governance in that sector and space marine chapters and imperial guard regiments and all the, I mean, I can inundate it with my own creations and then let my friends play around in that setting um, and wreak havoc in some cases, you know, I won't mention a chimera rigged up to uh, <laughs> jump out of a trench there. Dukes of Hazard Horn. Yes. <laughs> and oh Lord. I think part of that honestly comes from when we were introduced to the game. Um, Nova and I were talking about this the other night. We, the game back then, you know, second, third edition, even still into fourth edition, there was so much more mystery and intrigue to the game. You could tell all kinds of different stories. The lore has gotten a lot more clinical. Um, yeah. I definitely think the books are better written now as a whole. Um, mm -hmm. But there's there's less mystery to it all. There's less magic to it all. 
I know it's yeah. you know sci-fi, but there's less magic to it all. Um, but it has helped with with coalescing the lore and you know bringing moving the, the story stuff, forward too. Moving the story forward. Because, to be fair, now they've had over thirty years to build upon that lore. To be fair, so. Well, yes, it's lost some of the magic. It's probably because we've just been inundated into it for so long. Uh, maybe that's true. That that could be true. I, I mean, there's still a few blank spots out there where you know you can insert own subsector here and create a you know craft world and the Tyranid Splinter Fleet and all that. Oh, for mess sure, they, they give you all the tools to do that, which is awesome. Uh, with this company. I mean, it covers the entire galaxy. The Imperium rules. 70% of the galaxy, if not more. I mean, that's a lot of worlds and sectors and everything and for you to... To, des- to describe and fit in there. There's still... And, and I think that there's still so much that's been left unclaimed, but there's so much more lore now than there was back when we started that people seem to not be so willing to fill in the blank spaces. Mm-hmm. Um, which well, is why I love some of the, like, for instance, the Carcaridon books. You know, Robbie McNiven, Niven, Ivan? I think McNiven. Okay. He kind of fills in the, the blank spaces and, and tells his own stories, you know, within the constraints of the lore. Um, you know, like the old books did, like Eye of Terror. I love Iron, oh, Iron Snake. At the, at the same Evans, time, he keeps example, it such yeah. a mystery too. Like the, you go to the Carcaridon forums, and almost there's so many just different like groups of like, well, I think they're this, I think they're that, and so he he's done a really good job, in my opinion, of um, still filling in those blanks while keeping that kind of mis- mystique and mis- mystery to them. And yeah, I agree. Iron Snakes. You were saying there, El Scott. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Dan, The Iron Snakes by Dan Abnett is one of my 40, favorite 40K novels. Actually, I kind of, looking back at it and thinking about it now, um, it's um, actually kind of like they're prototype Primaris Marines, if you think about it. I mean, they, what they do, you know, I mean, it takes five of them to stop a Dark Elder invasion of a planet. Mm-hmm. Um, and throw uh, orc wog into dis- such disarray that uh, like they ended up making it to where they could get a whole company mm-hmm. of marines to fight a, a wog which is I mean if you think about it that's a hundred marines fighting who knows how many orcs that's absolute insanity but um, and it, any other author you know who would have had marines dying by droves I mean how many times have you run read some of the other novels where you know they lost three companies trying to fight off the orcs and stuff it's like yeah just kind of where the lore has has pulled in a little bit yeah that's a little bit better because you did have those huge differences in the older books one yeah. you'd have marines dying everywhere the next a few marines could take on an army you had yeah. big discrepancies even in the height and the build of the marines because back then you had people arguing no marines are only six feet or and then you had people arguing no they're eight to nine feet so I, I, I do agree that the new lore has done – the new, more clinical, surgical level of the lore has brought in a lot of details and solidified things, so there's a little less discrepancy. Yeah, um, definitely. But this, we're going to continue our conversation from the last video. Um, Nova, why don't you go ahead and tell us what influence 40K has had on your life? What, you know, it's um, gone on to mean for you? Sure. Well – Gosh, 40K has had such a huge impact on my life. Like, it's crazy. The people that I've met, I I know people from across the world. I have friends from Australia, New Zealand, Denmark, England. New Zealand. Uh, It's just crazy how this game has brought me together with individuals from other countries, from this country, that I would just have never met otherwise. Um. I know a few years back, I moved out to California, started getting into the local game scene here, and went to an event called Brawl in the Fall. And that's where I first met the Frontline crew with Reese and Frankie. Started talking to them, got to know them, found out that their shop was relatively close, only like a three-hour drive. So (laughs) 
Uh, and they used to do these things back in the day called challenges where you could come and do challenge videos with them where sometimes they'd be like, oh, if you can beat us, you know, you get a hundred bucks. Or I wanted to be on Team Zero Comp because I could tell right away, like, those guys had their thumbs on the pulse. They knew what they were doing. And I, I just knew that they're that they're going to be big, and they are. They're, they're huge influencers in the sphere of, of Warhammer. Um, Massive. So I went in. I actually challenged Frankie. I narrowly lost because I end of game uh, uh, maneuver, a Hail Mary on my part to get all the objectives didn't work. If it had work, would have beat him, would have been on the team. And then I face another gentleman who um, was with my Chaos Demons and he brought all White Scars bikers and all those bolters and twin bolters on those bikes just shredded my demon so bad. Um, that was the first time. I went up a second time and fought Reese in a battle report and I beat him. And I beat him on the very last die roll of the game. And this is another reason why I love this game. You have so many dramatic moments where victory hangs on the this precipice of just pure chance and luck. To be yeah, like not getting I, killed with bolters. I made a, an armor save on my attack bike. So when they had two wounds, I had one wound left, and I made I had four armor saves, rolled rolled them out, one passed, passed, passed on that last dice, rolled it and passed, and it got me the game. So that was really awesome. So I joined Team Zero Comp, started going to events uh, under that flag. And then they held a um, tournament. Now it's much more. It's, a, it's actually a con. Like, it's huge. It's called the Las Vegas Open. And I went there. I actually was a judge. Uh, I did the narrative judging for that year. And then I kept asking Reese to, for the next year, let's have a... 30k become a thing because horse heresy had just taken off and it was huge when it came out huge um and i just kept bugging him he's like no i'm not going to integrate him I'm like come on let's do it he's like no and finally he said why don't you just run the, a horse heresy event i'm like yeah okay i could do that whatever um so i ran the the first three years we did it i ran the horse heresy events and then i also started a night event <laughs> at night later after all the uh main things happen. We did something called the Night Joust, and you just brought one Titanic Knight, and you squared off against other people, single elimination. It, it's changed over the years to Royal Rumbles and all kinds of things, just try to keep it fresh. But that was probably, people are obliterated in Vegas, just having a great time, having their giant robots fight each other. So <laughs> it, it, it's really, really fun. I had one game both players' knights blew up simultaneously because one killed the other one. It blew up, killed that one. So they actually decided the their game by rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> it was pretty That's hilarious. great. Um, That's fantastic. So, so with that, I mean, with 40K, I, I like to travel around pre-COVID to different events around the country, um, going to different tournaments on the East Coast, the middle of the country, West Coast. Uh, I I took out a trip to England in 2011, and one of the stops I made sure to go was the the mecca of gamers for ga uh, war uh, Warhammer gamers. So I went to Warhammer World, and it was amazing. Loved it. Want to go back because they've done lots of changes since then. Definitely, definitely want to go back. Have to go back. Um, but no, it, this game, while being a game, has transcended that, and it's literally just shaped my life like i i know people i'd never know i've been to places i'd never been to would have been before it's just crazy thank you so much for being here for part two of our introduction to our channel video we do have part three coming up here soon if you like this content make sure to smash that like button hit subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified when we drop new videos in the future until next time this has been armchair generals <laughs>